Okay, as we look at the Middle Ages even deeper, now we're going to look at some people in power. Let's look at some key figures here. Uh, just five, uh, pl plenty more to analyze, and we may bring some other names up throughout our, our viewing here. But uh, let's just pick out five that were movers and checkers of the era. Number one, Clovis. Clovis was a Germanic tribal king, um, and uh, I believe late 400s is going to convert to Christianity. Uh, legend has it because he won a battle he didn't think he could win, so he uh, took on the god of his wife, and as was the, the, the custom at that time, his followers, uh, his subjects, uh, followed him into Christianity. So Christianity spreads right there with Clovis and uh, his conversion. Uh, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, another Germanic king a little bit later on, uh, a Frankish king, um, is going to extend and expand power through conquest. He is going to uh, implement policies that will be beneficial to his people. He's going to uh, emphasize education. He's going to emphasize the spread of Christianity. He is going to uh, emphasize public works, um, all of those things. He is going to actually limit the power of the noble, um, increasing his authority. He is going to actually be named the Emperor of Rome in 800, which is interesting because there hadn't been an emperor in Rome in over um, at, that, at that time over 300 years, but the Pope is going to bestow this title upon him, um, giving him a um, tremendous amount of um, authority and authenticity there. Um, let's move on. William the Conqueror. England is in the uh, early 1000s without an heir. Um, William comes over from Normandy. He is a, a Norman. He is a descendant of Viking settlers along the French coast. And he is going to invade Normandy and defeat Harold at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Big deal here. Uh, he's going to divide up his new holdings amongst his uh, many noble friends. And now we've got some feudalism going on in England. Um, culturally, uh, English culture will change. Um, there's going to be just tremendous French influence at this time. And, and that's a big deal. All right. Thomas Aquinas, he's a thinker, he's an innovator, he is a, uh, a reasoner, and he's going to be one of the first to try to bring reasoning skills into the conversation of religion. This uh, vein of thought is known as scholasticism, and it is going to be a precursor for philosophical movements in Europe, which will follow for centuries. Think um, Renaissance thinkers, think Enlightenment thinkers, he is a think humanist, think um, he is one of the uh, early forerunners of that. And then, of course, we have Joan of Arc, Hundred Years' War, uh, which was over 100 years, but England versus France, on again, off again, fighting, on again, off again, uh, perhaps in desperation, perhaps on a whim, who knows, um, somebody does maybe. Uh, the French look to Joan as a peasant girl who is considered a visionary. Uh, her visionary uh, leadership allows the French to be somewhat successful in battle. Uh, she is captured, charged of witchcraft, and later martyred. Uh, being an inspiration to the French, they will eventually win the Hundred Years' War. And uh, as England loses, they will look for seeds of democracy. Keep, keep a lookout for that. As France wins, uh, the power of their monarchy will, will grow. So there's some key figures, people in power. We're going to come back with a, another version of this people in power video and talk about uh, some of the events here. Thanks.